main page, and then uh, in the law notes, we'll go to foundation. And in the foundation, we have here, uh, people or citizen, which one are you? Okay, so we'll click on that. And this comes up with an article about the difference between people and citizens. Now, basically what it is is that uh, when this country was, we have a little feedback on this, I think, just a little too much feedback on the mic. But when this country was founded, uh, it originally was, was uh, a bunch of revolutionaries broke away from England and the king canceled all the charters so that uh, uh, there basically was no connection between all right. the volume. You're adjusting the volume, Dennis? Okay. So basically there was no connection between the, uh, uh, the king, Great Britain, and ourselves anymore. Uh, as far as the king was concerned, he still owned everything. As far as we were concerned, he didn't. But there was no legal connection because the king revoked all the charters. And we made our own statement of independence. And at that point, there was no government, not legally, so everybody became a sovereign. Okay? Now, there were some of us sovereigns who formed organizations that, that were formerly called colonies and now were called states. Okay? And so these, these organizations got together and they, they created this thing called the uh, uh, Confederation. Okay, and uh, so they had the Articles of uh, Confederation, and that worked for a while, but then it really didn't work, so they sent, each of the states sent their emissaries to a big meeting, and at that big meeting, the emissaries uh, basically went off on a tangent and said, well, what we really need to do is just rewrite this whole thing. But this time, instead of the states doing it, they did it as people still sovereign. And the theory they had was the Lockean theory that the, uh, you know, Locke was the uh, philosopher as opposed to Hobbes. Uh, Hobbes said power comes from the top and goes down to the people. Locke says power comes from the people and goes up to the top uh, to the government. And so our basic philosophy is Lockean. And um, they, uh, in the preamble, they basically said, we the people ordain and establish this constitution for you guys over there called the United States of America. So we're still acting with our sovereign powers. And, and then what we said, if you read through the constitution, toward the end it says that, okay, here's the game plan. And if nine of you organizations that call yourselves states will come on board with this plan, then it's a go. If we don't get nine of you at least, then it's a no-go. But the people put it together, proposed it, and said, okay, now you can volunteer into it, to the states. The, st the uh, states did volunteer into it, and so now uh, we had the United States of America, and uh, so they're, they're contracted, and there's actually court cases that, that recognize that the United States of America, as it's presently constituted, is by authority of the people and not by authority by the states and the states are contracted in and the people are still sovereign because it says we ordain and establish this constitution for whom for the united states of america okay well when we ordain and establish what does ordain and establish mean well the ordain part means to authorize to make law the the uh Established means we actually put it on paper so you can read it, publish it, spread it around, create it. So we ordain and establish. Now there's nothing about those two words, ordain and establish, that takes away from our sovereignty. We're still kings. Okay? Well, this is very painful to government. They couldn't stand that. So they had to figure a way. And don't, get, don't, don't uh, underestimate these people. These people um, think in 100-year terms or 200-year terms, okay? And one of the first signs of it, well, there are many first signs, of course, but one of the major first signs was when they took over the first uh, mandatory public school. 
You see, the first, you have to understand that when the United States broke away from England, we were a mature society. We were not just a bunch of colonists running around trying to figure out what to do. We had, we had education. We had knowledge here. We had people who were experienced and, and educated in history and, and new stuff. Do you realize that in 1776, Harvard University, which was owned by a church, was over 100 years old? Okay? So we're not just a bunch of bushmen running around in the forest wondering what to do. And we put together a really excellent system. In fact, the more I study it, the more I see, boy, these guys were sharp. But no matter how sharp they were, they did miss one point. At that time, uh, and for many decades, all education pretty much was private. The parents got together, hired the teachers for their kids. They had local control. You've heard of local control for schools. Well, they really had real local control. They had real homeschooling. And uh, uh, so in the 1850s, um, the government, I don't remember which city it was, but the government brought out the military and escorted the first children for the first mandatory public school. And that was the beginning of the public school system in the mandatory sense. There were public schools, but that was the mandatory public school. Now, why was it so important? Well, they couldn't change the Constitution. There was too much resistance there, so they changed the education system. From the 1850s to the 1950s, they stripped out the subject of civics and replaced it with a new subject that you're all pretty much familiar with. It's called American government. You ever take that in school? American government, social studies, okay? They took out civics. What is civics? Civics, if you look in the dictionary, at least the one I looked in, civics is the study of personal rights. It's that branch of political philosophy dealing with personal rights. Well, once the government gained control of the curriculum, they stripped out the things that were troublesome to government, things like your rights. So here we are again, okay, all of us basically are studying civics. That's really what we're doing when we go to court. Now, uh, so like I said, from the 1850s to the 1950s, they stripped it out, that subject is there, phased it out little by little. So from generation to generation, there might have been a deterioration, but it was not that visible what they were up to. But if you compare 100 years ago with today, or 150 years ago, you can see the difference, okay? Now, but that still wasn't enough because the people are sovereign. And um, uh, some people understood it, what it was. So they had, they had the uh, Civil War, and supposedly uh, it was over the issue of slavery. I can tell you the official reason for the Civil War the official reason I've actually seen with my own eyes. I saw the document that was signed by President Lincoln. It was on display at the Huntington Library. It, it, it's, uh, that document is privately owned and they had it on display, on loan to the library. And I happened to go there when I heard that they had this, this uh, document. I wanted to see it so I can say I have actually seen it myself. You know what it was? Lincoln attacked the southern states for failure to pay their taxes. That's the legal reason, okay? Because you see, the federal government had to live off of the states. There was no income tax. So, and of course, that's pretty bad too, because you remember, money is power. And the states were able to keep the federal government under control, pretty much, uh, because they were the source of the money. And the federal government got, got quite desperate when a source of their income was going to try and leave. So they used force to keep them in the Union. So um, anyhow, they, uh, they had that little fiasco called the Civil War. And in 1868, they, again, using slavery as the, uh, as the excuse, they then came through with some amendments which supposedly helped to free the slaves. One of them, of course, was the 13th Amendment, 